Unfortunately, we hear about these cases a lot. It's been happening since the beginning of time. And this case affects someone in my community, the mulattoes. It's deplorable. And it's honestly just like, I can't bring myself to like comprehend why this is so normalized, why so many people are okay with it. But there's a lot of sick people in the world who think this is okay. This is like, this is how they live their life. And, you know, these few people may be like the bottom of the barrel, the low of the low, but it's people in high places who do this too. It's been priests who did it, government officials, some presidents who do stuff like this. But in this case, it's the low of the low, the decrepit ones who did it. And it's a hard, like it's a hard case to even like listen to or understand that a little boy, just being a little kid, going to the park, minding his own business, gets lured into a trailer by some nasty old man, and hurt in the way that he was hurt. How do you look at a child and be like, I want that? To do your sick acts on you like i can't fathom like what's wrong with people like i don't understand and i don't think i ever will understand like what is wrong with people how you could do this to someone i just don't get it but growing up i remember people like this existing and trying to lure kids and trying to lure me and my friends like oh come hang out with us why does a grown person want to hang out with little kids that doesn't make sense to me but it happens more often than we well, than we talk about. And in my personal opinion, I think these people should be executed. But that's just me. They do nothing but harm society. I don't care who disagrees with that. Because I'm going to just assume you're a sick person too. Who wants these people in the world? There is no cure for it. Get them out of here. So this is the evil, wicked witch who watched as they like abuse this little boy she's disgusting i mean look at her she looks exactly like what would do that you know what i mean and this is the son of the man who helped with that he looks exactly like like these people look like they would be the ones to do it like you shouldn't have your kids around them you know they look like they belong in the hills but i'm about to play the clip from the news article at the time i mean from the news clip at the time it looks very old because it was the early 2000s, but... ...be charged with murder, but just what are the missing pieces of the puzzle in this case that hide just what role each suspect may have had? Local attorney Rick Alexander, a former prosecutor, has plenty of experience in capital and sex crimes cases back here on The Morning Show. Good what to have you here. It is incumbent upon the police to do a number of things right now to preserve the integrity of this case, the evidence in this case, and to help prosecutors better do their job. What exactly is it they need to do? One of the things they need to do is something that may be a little counterintuitive, and that is hunt out and search down and close out any loose ends that might exist, any kind of suggestion or uh, lead that they got uh, that somebody else did this. Um, loose ends is where good criminal defense lawyers uh, make a living. It would seem to me, and, and open the door to appeal, it would seem to me that that would be standard operating procedure, but history tells us that's not always the case. Well. And, I, and the reason I call it counterintuitive is sometimes, and, and what makes a great police detective, their instinct, they've got a sense about something, um, and then they can laser in on a suspect because they, ha they just they have good good nose for it. Sometimes uh, that doesn't help us on the on the prosecuting end. They're like, well, you zeroed in on my client. You didn't look at at, at these other uh, possibilities. How do we know that guy didn't call, do it? All right, Adam was talking about the possibility of new charges being filed against the four people who are being held at this hour. I presume they would be felony murder charges here in Florida because you don't have to have an intent to kill. That's right. A felony murder charge is if you are engaged in a felony and someone is killed, then you can be charged with murder, and it's called felony murder. Um, and what I'm hearing from, you know, the facts that we're getting uh, through, through the releases, uh, they they may have been engaged in a felony, the four of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how you would get all of them in. I, I don't know. Apparently, there, there looks like there's some abuse going on and obviously some potential cover-up by the, by the f 
the rest of them. And, and you, you're basing that upon the fact that they gave what appear to be erroneous clues to police, sent them on a what, what police have called a wild goose chase yes. in, in searching for his body. That brings me to the next logical question. Charged with felony murder, could have become a capital case. It's my understanding that the Supreme Court basically has two litmus tests to decide whether or not in Florida a felony murder case can result in the death penalty. Yes, now this, the person that can be charged with a capital offense is the one that killed the child. And, you know, I could, I could easily see uh, there be multiple people involved in this. Um, so we just don't know, but, but I could definitely see this being a capital And case. it's those loose ends that you started talking off, uh, uh, started this discussion about, that could ultimately provide the materials that prosecutors need to make this a capital case. Yes. Rick Alexander, thanks for your insights. Appreciate it. You can find much more about the Barrios case, including a complete uh, timeline on our web channel, newsforjacks.com. You'll find the story on the site's front page. So this little baby was only six years old, and I want people to put that in perspective, that this was a baby, like a little child, and they lured him into their nasty trailer, these sickles right here, lured them in, lured him in, I, I apologize, and hurt him and you know he's saying i'm gonna tell my grandmother which is why they were like we need to kill him because if he's gonna tell his grandmother we're gonna go to jail like i don't know why they thought that they were gonna get away with it you know they apparently found that he they used soap and water to wash off the fingerprints from where they strangled him they tried to clean up that they um i'm trying to say it without you know getting demonetized but their fluids they had to clean that up and they found evidence of that it's this i oh my god like i can't i'm not really good at this because like these cases really get to me especially growing up watching people like this just exist in the world and they get out in eight years or five years after hurting somebody because the dad actually hurt his daughter and apparently his son because his son's into this you know like father like son he hurt his daughter and he's still out of jail the son hurt two boys before this and he was not in jail so you see how society treats these these disgusting evil people all i have to say is protect your children make sure they're not around evil disgusting people don't let them out of your eyesight because this little baby was walking you know to the park by himself and i'm not gonna blame his parents or grandmother for that because you think it, oh he's just walking down the street he'll be fine but in reality no because the second you take your eyes off that kid these adults or other children will snap like that though their whole demeanor will change i've seen it happen to me and i know other people it's happened to you the second our parent or grandparent left the room, these people switched up like that. Like, oh yeah, I can babysit her. And as soon as they leave, that's a completely different person. Do not do it. Keep your kids. This is why I'm afraid to have children because I don't want to bring kids into a world like this. But this is Christopher's mom. I genuinely can't imagine what she's going through right now or at that time for that matter. But apparently he lives with he lived with his dad and stepmom, and I think his little brother in that picture. So he's led to the arrest of Edenfield, his father David and mother Peggy. Police had their suspects, but not Christopher. He wasn't found until the 15th of March, nearly three miles from his home, his body stuffed into a trash bag covered with bugs. When the Edenfields appeared in court nearly a month later, Christopher's mother had this to say. It's Christopher, he was the Brighten up everybody, you know, make you smile. You just the smile alone is enough. I mean, he's gorgeous. He never would hurt anybody. I'm gonna understand why they did this to a child, period. What's justice for you? Justice for me is to see them get what they deserve, which should be death. The state is seeking the death penalty against both David and George Edenfield. Peggy Edenfield avoided that by agreeing to testify against both. She is alleged to have watched while her son and husband both raped the little boy before killing him. Sheila Parker, WSAV News 3. So Peggy's decrepit self got 60 years in prison and avoided the death penalty by telling on her son and husband. David Edenfield, who is the father here with the glasses, obviously, he actually 
pled guilty to incest with his daughter and got 10 years probation prior to this, he was sentenced to death. Thank the Lord, as he deserves. Even though sometimes it feels like death is a bit too easy for these people. I, I mean, honestly, it's the least that we could do as society is to get these people out of here. But I think it's funny that he got the death penalty because of his wife, Peggy, the nasty, disgusting witch. He, she testified against him and they relied heavily on that testimony to give him that death penalty. I just love when evil people like this turn on each other. And George, I don't feel bad for this man at all. I don't care what his father, mother, grand, I don't care what happened to you. You do not have the right to do that to others. So yeah, obviously his father did this to him and his sister. I don't care. Okay. With that being said, this man hurt two boys before. Okay. He was sentenced to probation. I don't know how you get probation for hurting children, but that seems to be a common thing in the U.S. He fit, he violated his probation in 2006 i believe prior to the murder for being too i think with being within a thousand feet of a school my apologies it wasn't a school it was a park in downtown brunswick and he, that was prior to the murder now he was found incompetent and although I said I do not feel bad for him, I have, like, at all. Like, I do not care what he went through. He did not have the right to do this to this boy. I do understand how the state was like, something's wrong up here. I could see how that abuse made him mentally ill. And he, for all we know, could be an incest child because they're down with incest, obviously. I understand why he's in a state facility, like a state mental facility. I get that. But stay there. Don't come out here into society. Let the therapist, psychiatrist, whatever, study his brain so we can recognize this in more people and get them out of here too. There's a whole island, actually. There's a whole prison island for people like this. Send him there because we don't need him in the rest of society. Now, this right here, this is Donald Dale, the evil person who helped them cover up the crime. He, unfortunately got to plead for a lesser crime saying that he just tampered with police evidence and was sentenced to a mental facility as well he does look you know off but i don't feel that's fair i feel like he should have went to prison because you still help get rid of a body of a little boy you should be ashamed of yourself and he should go to prison A little boy now has to grow up without his brother.